Hi everyone, today I just want to review a few of the things that we've covered with the Twitter API so that you can do the exercise that will allow you to pull some items, um, some geocoded items, and place them on a map. And Upon has done a lot of the work for us in terms of setting up the files. I want you to really just focus on the part where they're pulling information from the API, and when we get back together after Mass Comm Week, we'll talk a little bit more about um, the Google Maps API that Upon used to actually um, chart these things. Um, so really just as a review, if we want to look at some of the very first files that Upon worked on with us, this uh, Tweet Basic was the very first one. So I've got that here in Text Wrangler to review. And basically what it does is he um, allows you to put in a search term, and we know that we can use ands and ors so that we can have additional search terms. Um, we use percent two, three to represent the hashtag. Um, and this here uh, appends the search term to the base URL for the Twitter API so that we can make a URL string that actually does the search for us. This short uh, term, search term short, is just the, um, uh, word that gets as a prefix on the name of the file that we create uh, down here when we create the file that puts the JSON data in it. And of course you use your own Twitter credentials. So this is a pretty small file and it's um, the most basic thing that you can do. This is just going through the Twitter API once for the maximum amount that it will let you do setting up the search string to include the search term, in this case South by Southwest, SXXSW, and then the count being 100. Uh, and then he set up the um, OAuth tokens to be able to reference the things in the consumer key, consumer secret, and token key, and to be able to use the OAuth client to make the request. This is where the actual request gets made, and the method is the get. And then it basically just writes the data to a file. And this is where that short, um, the search term short gets appended so that the file here is going to be named sxsw underscore tweets dot json. We're concatenating that. And it's just writing it to the file. That one time we're just getting 100 tweets if they exist. And um, it's going to uh, print it out into that file. And so let's try that one right now. So if I come over here, to my terminal, I need to make sure that I'm in the folder that has that. So I'm just going to take, say CD, that's going to take me up to the top. And if I ls that, I'll be able to see what's in there. And I know that I have all of these in my documents. And I know that they're in my coding folder. And within coding, I have a files. If I just ls that, I have API and we'll list that. And this is where I have my tweet Python file. So in tweet Python, I have another folder. And we are finally there. And if I ls that, I can uh, run tweet basic. So I'm going to say Python tweet basic.py and run it. And uh, it looks like it ran. So we should be able to go and see if a folder has been created or new file has been created. And it has sxsw underscore tweets.json. And if we open this up in Text Wrangler, we'll be able to see that we have this nice JSON file here that includes all the tweets about South by Southwest that we just pulled. And it's not very helpful when we look at it like this, but there are some nice tools that let you convert JSON to um, CSVs. So I'm going to try to find one of those right now. So I'm just going to select everything and then copy it. And I found a few nice tools to convert JSON to CSV. This one here, this konklone.io slash JSON. If I put the code in here, it will create a nice table and I can download this entire CSV. Puts it in this one called result uh, four because I've done it a few times. And nicely, when I open up this result CSV, it actually put this everything in um, an Excel file. And if I just want to look, here's the text of the tweets that have SXSW on it. So I only got 100 of those. 
But it's a good way to start. I mean, you pulled something from an API, you've got a bunch of tweets to look at, you can see what the trends are, and you can take a look at all this other metadata that's available about the tweets. Now, the next thing that we did is a multi-tweet search. This was this tweet multi, and upon set up um, some loops that would allow you to run through a few times so that you could always go back to uh, the last tweet and continue doing a search one, two, three, four, five times, depending on the number of tweets you wanted to pull about that topic. And so we can run uh, that one. Well, let, let's take a look at what that looks like. So I've got the tweet multi here, and this basically sets up the make URL. And so he's got some um, things here that let it know what to do so that it doesn't crash later in the file, like if there are no tweets, um, or go ahead and append the um, string for the max ID inside this um, URL string. And this um, URL is where the actual URL gets made based on the make URL function right here. And so here's the loop that does that. And it ends up pretty much the same way as the other one did, where um, it writes to a local file, but it appends instead of just writes this time, which means it adds something every time to it. I changed the file here so that it would look for a search uh, term short. So that's all that does. It does exactly what Tweet Basic does, except it does it several times so that you can go back further than 100 tweets. So let's run that one. And it's tweet malt set.py. And so you can see it going through each time. This is the five iterations of it. And we should have another JSON file. So let me close the one we looked at. Since they're named the same thing and they're in the same folder, they're, it's going to overwrite itself. Now it's a much bigger JSON file. And if I open that in Text Wrangler, we can take a look at that see what it looks like. Like I said, it's a much bigger file. It's 2.2 megabytes. Um, the problem here is that it's too big to work with this converter. And I tried a couple other converters that are online, um, this Code Beautify and this JSON to CSV converter. And for some reason, these did not like the file format that uh, was being created here by our Python script. So I'm going to work with a pond to figure out a way that we can use the um, results of our JSON and convert it to a CSV so we can at least easily get it into Excel for you to start working with the data. I don't have that problem solved just yet, um, but that won't affect your ability to do the project. Um, and I did find that if I ran this particular script over several times very quickly, I hit up against the API rate limit that Twitter has. So um, you may end up getting some errors and not know what they are. And I believe that's because we ran up against the rate limit. So wait a few minutes, and then you'll be able to use it again. Um, but just keep that in mind as you're working. So the next thing that we have are these folders that um, Upon gave us with the project files. So that's why I had sent those to you. And we've got viz marker as a folder and viz circles. And in VizMarker, the file that we want to look at and work with is the Python file tweet grab coords for Viz. And uh, look at that here, um, tweet grab coords for Viz from the markers. And you can go through here and you can see a lot of the same things where we're looking at um, creating the URL via the search term. And we established the search term, I think, further down here. So we have the search term and the short term, the search term short that goes into the file name. And then in this case, he's got a lot of things that help look for the coordinates. So we're really being specific to only tweets that have um, geocoded coordinates in them, which is a lot fewer. Um, so it goes through here and it writes, the, there's a function for writing the coordinates. Um, there's a function for write text as a TD. Um, and then there's a function here for write the HTML body prefix and for writing the HTML body suffix. So it's all creating this information and putting it into an HTML table. You'll recognize some of the table HTML up here that's actually being written to put the longitude, the latitude, and then the text for the file, for the tweets in a HTML table. And then we have the number of results we want to use. So this one's 10,000, we can only do 100 at a time. Um, so it'll go through several times 
and it will write and create the tweets coordinates.html file sxsw because that's our uh, search term short. And then uh, when we come down here to the coordinates area, this is where it's going to um, create the coordinates that is going to be used to map this. And that's being concatenated with this viz script marker file. And this is the one that you can take a look at and you can modify um, things in these scripts if you'd like. This one doesn't have as much to modify as the circles, um, but this is what is actually going to create the map. And we'll talk about the Google Map API a little bit more later, but I just wanted you to have a way to be able to visualize these things. So let's run this one, the um, grab coordinates to make the marker file. And in this case, I have to go up a level. So CD dot dot to go back. And uh, I am in the API folder. So I want to go back one more. Nope, I'm in the right folder, sorry. And I want to CD into my project files. And I'll list those. And we want to go into the viz marker. And here I want to run the tweet grab chords for viz.py file. And we'll run this. And this may take a few seconds to run because we are doing 10,000 of these, so it has to go through the loop 100 times. Okay, so that looked like it worked. So if we come over to the folder that has those in it, it made the South by Southwest tweets coordinates.html and South by Southwest tweets map. So let's look at the coordinates file. Let's open this in the browser, open it in Firefox. And uh, you can see here, it created a nice table that has the latitude, the longitude, and the actual tweet with South by Southwest in it, the last uh, or several of these that um, had geocoding. So we went through 10,000 and only this many actually had uh, the geocoding turned on. And uh, we can look at how those were mapped. If we open the file that was created for the map in that folder, map. And we've got the pins on the map that are um, focused in on the Texas area, uh, at least the central Texas area that has Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. We could go further out on the map, and there are tweets that are all around the country here if we wanted to look at those. So those are still on the map, but to focus in on the area that we're on. And then, you know, we can hover over those. You don't have to click on them, but you can hover over those and uh, get the text to come up that goes with each tweet. Sometimes it takes a second for the text to come up. But yeah, you can see what's under each one of those. So that's pretty cool. And then the very last one that Upon did is this one that has the viz circle. So it visualizes the tweets in a circle. Let's look at those uh, in circles on a map that lets you know um, the number of tweets that are happening in that particular region. So we have something set up here, very similar, some different uh, defaults here for the make URL because we have to make sure that there are tweets and we have to make sure that they have geocodes. And uh, if they don't, we have to have a generic search string, string that goes through so it doesn't crash the file. And uh, we have functions here to write coordinates, uh, taking the latitude, longitude, number, and local file. We have um, a function here for writing the radii and the geocode. And we have functions to the right text as a TD. So again, we're still creating these um, tables to hold the coordinates in here of the tweets. And uh, we have the place here where you can change the search term. So I'm doing the same thing. And uh, we have the city of geocode. So if you want to look at different cities, he has assumed several cities in here. If you want to look at different cities around the US, you could change the latitude and longitude of these for it to see the um, geocoding that was done in those cities. And then it um, goes through 
and it maps the results, pulls the data on it um, for those particular cities. And you can see that the um, file uses this viz script circles HTML file. And again, this is the JavaScript that works with the Google Maps API to place the circles on the map. So we'll explain that a little bit further when we get back together. So let's run this. Um, I'll come back to the terminal and I have to go up a level and uh, CD into viz circles. And we'll list that. And I see that I have the um, tweet geo search for viz.py. And in here, let's see how many times he has us going through it. So in this one, we have uh, max results for Twitter, 100, desired max count, 3,000. So we'll be going through this uh, 30 times in the way we have it set up here. So let's run that. And this will take a second or two for it to finish. And it's done. So we should be able to now go into the viz circles and we see we have the South by Southwest tweets geo. This is just the file that prints the location of all the cities that we're looking at and the um, distance from the city that we're looking at. And uh, we will look at now the actual map. Tweets map. Oh wait, we want to look at that in the circles. Tweets map. So we have all these uh, different cities where people are tweeting about. Um, so we have uh, tech. We have uh, Austin, which a lot of people are tweeting here. We have Dallas. We have New York. A few people up in Seattle, Washington, um, and those were just the cities that were selected for the script. So that's it. Um, upon had said that you could go through and obviously you can change the search terms. Um, on the map with the circles, you can change the cities. You can change the number of times we go through the loops in any of them. And uh, there are things in the this one here, if you look at the actual file that does the circles, there are things that you can change in here in terms of these colors if you want different colors, and um, if you want to have a different level of opacity for the fill color for the cities. And so you can work on those. And that's it. Um, you should uh, go through and play with this, become really familiar with what the Python files are doing and understand what you can do with the Twitter API. Create some maps, um, both markers and circles types of maps, and do a blog post that has links to your results. And so you'll, so you'll need to upload um, your resulting files, your HTML files online. You don't have to upload your Python files. And um, just, you know, describe what it is you did, what you looked at, and we'll discuss that when we get back because this will all feed into what we're doing on our project. So uh, I know this is um, complex, but stay with us and um, it will continue to get clearer and make more sense as we go throughout the semester. So I will see you all during Mass Comm Week.